I attempted to unlock all of the TDS Holiday Battle Pass and look at the best and worst skins available. For game 1, I actually already had one of the Battle Pass skins. Since by just casually playing, I had acquired enough candy for the Holiday Scout. This skin sets a precedent for many of the higher tier ones to come, with the bright green color scheme and white fluffy accents, and a festive colored gun. It's still pretty basic though, so I give it an overall 6 out of 10. But with only about 200 candy, I need to play more for more skins. So I grabbed an honestly uh, pretty bad loadout and hopped in the matchmaking game, where my whole team left, which was pretty disappointing, but I had to bounce back on game 2, Fallen Mode on Tropical Isles. I grabbed a mostly better team and decided to fully farm for the early game. This guy's got a lot of scouts. One teammate spammed Gold Scout and the other placed Engineers. As the game continued, I farmed and eventually had to place an Elf Camp so we wouldn't die. Elf Camp really is a top tier tower. This run is uh, going pretty good. Except, uh, that UI is in the way. Because it got stuck on my screen due to a glitch. And though you can't change inventory mid game. So regardless, I kept farming. Uh, I have a lot of money and upgrade elf camps more, making sure to collect drop candy canes from the specially marked zombies while my team defended. As we reached the late game, we got a pretty good setup going. I started placing Rocketeers and a few Engineers. I brought Rocketeer. That was honestly a pretty bad decision. My Rocketeer kind of swag though. But we had a nice spread of offensive and defensive towers. And we actually reached the final wave. I was a bit nervous as the Fallen King reached the first bend in the path and started to outrun tower range. But thanks mainly to Rocketeer, we of course managed to kill the boss. And I had earned under 100 candy, which clearly was a bit problematic considering just how many I would need to complete this battle pass. Still, it was enough for the soldier skin. The first few levels are pretty similar to every other holiday skin, but I do like the final upgrade where it gets a Santa hat and red coat. Still, I generally find soldier to be one of the blandest towers in the game, and I really can't rate this that highly, despite the cool weapon decoration. 4 out of 10. For the next game, I got some interesting teammates. On Fallen Mode Wrecked Battlefield, our early defense was, how you would say, non-existent. But after saving a bit, I did place an Executioner, which helped slightly. In the Wave 5, a Gold Pyro was placed, which helped a lot. But this one got pretty messy. We struggled to kill the Fallen in the Wave 20, relying on Elf Camp spawns, and there was no real team coordination. Everyone was just kind of doing their own thing, which for me meant placing a bunch of Electroshockers. Slightly annoying another player. No, I won't. I had brought Elf Camp again, along with another teammate, and they worked well on this map due to just how long it was. Uh, we killed the tank. Things are going... not great, honestly, but... okay. There were a few shaky moments, but yet again we reached the final wave. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna win. Yeah, we probably will. We probably will. Thanks to an impressive array of DPS towers, slowly wheeled down the boss as it passed the various bends in the path, and... we won. This time I earned slightly more candy canes than last time. Actually not even being enough for the next tier, meaning I would have to play another game for more skins. Again switching my loadout, I went to Ruby Escort Fallen Mode, a map I haven't really played much on. It's got a nice soft fall color palette and a big pirate ship. We have a very strong start here. Loud DPS. We had a very strong start early with a bunch of golden towers, and as the waves passed we only got stronger and stronger, except for a few leaked shadows. But other than that, I placed an upgrade in DJ early for the discount and started placing my DPS towers. This run is pretty strong, I think. Wait, they made Excel cost more. This was honestly the strongest loadout I'd used yet, and my teammates had similar team composition. Before wave 30, we had an entire army of engineers, accelerators, and various golden towers. We were practically speedrunning the fallen zombies, and I was collecting a decent amount of candy. There was even a backup reserve of accelerators on the pirate ship. I think we might win, maybe. I, I don't know. The glitches, the tank, the necromancer with a present head, all of them melted under our power. It seemed as if there was no possible way we could lose. And at last we reached wave 40. The path of this map was a bit shorter than the others, but we had so much DPS that we were still doing very well, killing the buffer zombies. And as the Fallen King crossed the plank to the pirate ship, victory looked imminent. But then, something terrible happened. The only possible way I could lose this game. Not by a boss ability, or an accidental tower cell, or a meteor shower. Rather, I got disconnected. Well, less than 60 seconds away from winning the match. Well, I'm gonna cry in real life. Nah, it's, it's okay. This internet disruption meant I didn't earn the coins and EXP rewards. Pretty annoying. But luckily I did get to keep my candy cane. So at least that let me get another skin. 
One thing this new season pass does very well is incorporating the theming into the weapons as well as the tower itself. Whereas in the past, accessories typically remained the exact same, in the shotgun specifically you can see the brand new model for the gun, with an open present acting as a sort of dragon's maw barrel for the gun. However, other than the gun, the skin itself is very basic. And similar to Soldier, this is a tower I very rarely use. As such, it doesn't really stand up to some of the other skins. 5 out of 10. So moving on, I knew I was going to need a lot more currency for the next tier. I equipped another load out and hopped onto four seasons. This didn't exactly go great, as I was literally the only person defending with a warden, which wasn't even doing good. So far, uh, we don't really have much damage. All my teammates are kind of farming. My teammates only farmed and placed a few elf camps, and it wasn't until wave 15 where a gold mini was finally placed. But thanks to all that farming, we got a lot stronger in the following waves. And with a total of 6 elf camps plus all the hardcore towers, the momentum swung to our side slowly but surely. Wave 35, 36, 37, 38, 39 all passed with no problems, and we reached the final wave, is what I wish I could say. But unfortunately, on wave 38, I got disconnected again, losing the they're practically guaranteed 700 coins. Why? Why? Uh, I think I finally found out what the antenna on top of the elf camp does. So after two back-to-back -back aborted runs, I still need thousands more candy canes. With me being sick, I still am, and the game having internet issues, it seemed impossible. It looked like I would surely have to buy the tears just to finish the video. But luckily, there was one boo that I had, because through the power of teamwork, I had already failed the rest of the season pass skin. Matchmaking had paired me with teammates who were using the skins I hadn't yet unlocked, allowing me to see them in action. For example, Holiday engineer was in games 2, 3, and 4. The skin doesn't change much as with all engineer outfits, but nonetheless it's probably the best available with the bright colors and big coat, and the customized hammer is a very nice touch. Although it's unfortunate the sentries don't change at all. Still, I give it an 8 out of 10, mainly because of the tower it's for. And the holiday cowboy was also in games 3 and 4, a nice skin with its big floppy hat and festive bandolier, 7 out of 10. By simply playing games, I'd been able to witness all these skins. Minigunner was also in 3 of the games. Unless a pretty cool skin, which oddly enough I mainly appreciate for its flat torso in early levels, rather than the typical ammo strap. It's reminiscent of the old, simpler design of the tower. It also gets a literal slay gun, which is cool. 9 out of 10. Crook Boss is a pretty uncommon tower to see in high level lobbies, but even so, a singular one was placed on Ruby Escort. This skin stands out with a dark color palette, undoubtedly serving as a metaphor for the darkness of big business. And its final level is reminiscent of the 2019 classic, with a cute present backpack. 8 out of 10. Lastly, there was a holiday commander, though I actually didn't see this one. Still, looking at the preview, it is pretty cool. 17 out of 10. Overall, I'd say the season pass is pretty good. I like that they mixed up the theming a bit, going with green and white is still a standard red. Thanks for watching, please consider subscribing if you aren't. It's very quick and easy, it makes you a lot cooler, trust me. Okay, bye.